Okay, so in this video, we're just going to uh, cover a little bit of theory um, on pulse length bands and discrimination. Okay, um, and um, this is stuff we covered in a lecture, but I'm just going to do a quick review of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compare pulse lengths. So in this uh, example here, the blue dots are supposed to represent, you know, uh, uh, water, oxygen molecules in the atmosphere, and the green lines are your are your uh, pulses. So in this case, uh, um, they're supposed to represent basically X band. Okay, so um, the uh, three centimeter radar. Now what you see here is in the upper one, uh, you've got, uh, let's see, there's one cycle. So there's basically two cycles of energy. And here there's one, two, three, four, five cycles of energy. This is a longer pulse, it's got more cycles, it's got more energy. This is a shorter pulse. It's got less cycles, less energy. So let's look what happens as these things start to go through the atmosphere. Okay. So as they're going through the atmosphere, you can see that as it's going, uh, each time it hits one of these molecules, there is uh, attenuation that's happening, scattering and um, absorption. And because the, the upper one, the shorter pulse began with less energy, by the time it gets, uh, you, know, X, you know, this distance away, it has less energy than, than, the, um, than the longer pulse. They're both being attenuated, but because the, the longer pulse had more energy to begin with, there's, there's more energy at this point, okay? So here we go, we continue on, and you can see now that if you look up here, the short pulse, there's barely any energy left. The long pulse still has some, all right? And at this point, the short, the short pulse disappears altogether. So well, the, 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 the point here is that a longer pulse will last longer as it goes through the atmosphere. It has more energy, okay? So if you want to send the pulse out a long distance, you're probably going to want to use a long pulse so that, you know, by the time it gets far away from the radar, there's still energy there, okay? So now, now we're going to compare something totally different. This is not short pulse to long pulse. This is X to S. So if you look at this, Okay, here is a time frame. Okay, this is, uh, you know, uh, a certain number of milliseconds. And this is a certain number of milliseconds. And you can see that the X band has got four, uh, one, two, three cycles in the um, time frame, whereas the S band has only two. Now, if you look at this, this is uh, many more cycles, much more uh, higher frequency. Look how many molecules the S, the X band is hitting. It's hitting it ha every one of those molecules. But look at the S band. It's only hit, there's, it didn't hit these two, and it has hit these. So this one's hit four. This one's only hit two. So let's see what happens as, as these things start to travel through the atmosphere. Now, these pulses, by the way, they're the same pulse length. So let's say that this is a short pulse, short pulse X in the up in the green, and short pulse long in the red. And you can see that the short pulse S, the red one, is hitting less molecules. Well, as a result, it's going to be less attenuated as time goes on. The X, the, the three centimeter, is hitting more molecules. It's being more attenuated. This, now you can see that the X, the three centimeter, has totally disappeared at this distance, whereas the S, well, it's attenuated, but it still has some juice because it was hitting less molecules per, per cycle, all right? For that reason, the S band will travel farther. So what can we take from this? Long pulse will travel farther than short pulse, and S band will travel farther than X band. Okay, but when you have an X band, if you had an X band short pulse, X band long pulse, well, the long pulse would go farther than the short pulse. You have to keep the X versus S and the short versus long separate in your head. And these two slides will hopefully help you do that. Let's continue. Um, uh, anyway, uh, this is just also just showing you that the X band hit every molecule that was that it encountered, and this one only hit half of them. Okay, now we're going to move on to discrimination. So there's two types of discrimination. And discrimination is basically defined as the ability of the radar to distinguish between two different targets. Bearing discrimination is the two targets at the same range, okay, the same range but slightly different bearings. Does it appear like two targets or does it appear as if it's one? So uh, I've got this little graphic to help us understand this. So this is, we're looking down, this is the horizontal beam width here, and... Um, 
The uh, IMO says that the beam width should be no more than two degrees so as to be able to differentiate between targets that are two and a half degrees apart. Uh, it, it's a little bit more involved than that, but that's the general idea. It's good enough for now. So what's going to happen here is down here, this blue circle, that is our um, radar screen. This is the antenna. This is the beam width coming out. And what about you're about to see is some pulses coming out and then echoes coming back. The pulses will be blue. The echoes will be red. And you'll see some ships starting to, starting to appear. So this is kind of a bird's eye view of what's going on. So let's start this thing in motion. So you can see the pulses coming out, and it hits the bow of a target, and a, um, uh, uh, an echo comes back. Now, at this point, the target, there are two targets. There are two targets here. Now, they are both within the, the width, the horizontal beam width. And as a result of that, the radar is not going to be able to distinguish between the two targets. Essentially, this is the leading edge of the pulse, okay, of the beam width. This is the trailing edge of the beam width. And uh, in order for the targets to show up as two, we'll see this in just a minute, the targets have to be separated by at least a beam width. So let's just, let's just continue on here. And see. So it goes out, okay, and it comes back, and the radar was unable to distinguish that there were two targets there. Okay, because both targets were hit by the same pulse at some point in the um, rotation. All right. So for the radar to be able to discriminate the two targets at the same range but different bearings, they must be at least one beam width apart. Trailing edge of the beam must leave the first target before the leading edge hits the second. So the uh, trailing edge has to leave the first before the leading edge hits the second. Let's take another look. So now this is two targets separated by a greater distance. So here you can see this is the leading edge of the beam. This is the trailing edge of the beam. So the leading edge is already on target one, and there goes the, okay, so there's our reflection coming back, and we got a paint All right now. You can see now that the targets are, uh, that the first target is almost out of the beam, and the second target is just coming into the beam now. At this point, the first target is totally out. Those targets are separated by at least a beam width. So what do you think is going to happen here? When that hits, it's going to send back a pulse, and it's, it's going to appear to be two different targets. Okay. So that's the whole thing about horizontal beam width, all right? That the targets have to be separated. If the targets are separated by one beam width, they'll show up as two targets. If they're less than one beam width apart, they'll show up as one. Okay. Now, a little bit more about uh, this, because X-band is, uh, is better at discriminating, bearing discrimination, than S. And this is the reason why. Typical X-band uh, antenna is about 5 feet long. A typical S-band antenna is about 12 feet long. Okay, so that's about 2 and a half times long, longer. For the S-band to have the same bearing discrimination as X, it actually needs to be 3.3 times as long. So if the X is 5 feet, the S would need to be 3.3 times 5 or 16.5 feet. You're not going to find a 16.5 foot S band antenna. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, it becomes a little bit ungainly. Remember, these things have to be able to operate in 100 knots of wind. So it's 4 feet longer. That's going to be harder for the motor to keep going. You're going to need a stronger motor. It's going to be more expensive. And the fact of the matter is, is that every ship that's going to have an S band on it is going to have an X band on it as well. So you don't actually need to have as, as, as good bearing discrimination because you use your bearing discrimination with the X. All right. So, um, so since the S band is not a full 3.3 times as wide, the bearing discrimination is going to be less. Okay. Um, now short pulse may have some secondary effect on beam width, but the major reason is the, uh, band X band. Okay. And so here's just a little example. This is uh, maybe a typical X-band antenna and a typical S-band antenna. And this is grossly exaggerated, but you can see because of the physics of how things work, the S-band is going to have a wider beam. If I wanted this S-band to have the same beam width, okay, to reduce it from this to that, okay, um, I would have to elongate that antenna to make it 3.3 times as long as that. And so you can see all right, that, that essentially then, okay, in this situation, the targets are a beam width separated. 
these are within the beam width. So we have two targets here. We have one target there. All right. If I was to extend the antenna, uh, that I would be able to narrow the horizontal beam width, and then the targets would show up as two different targets. Uh, let's talk about range discrimination now for a couple of minutes. So this is range discrimination. This is another bird's eye view. Okay, and uh, this one here, the targets are uh, on the same bearing, but they're at different ranges, okay? So we're gonna fire out our pulse here, all right? And here comes our pulse. Okay, so our pulse is about to hit the first target. Now you can see that here's the pulse length, and it looks to me like the targets are separated by about a pulse length, all right? Now, the leading edge of the pulse has hit the target, and the echo has started to, go, started to move. The trailing edge, the, the, the target is still being hit by the pulse. So you can see the echo is still being generated. And the echo will, get, will still continue to be generated. It will get longer and longer until the trailing edge passes the ship. So right here, the pulse has now stopped being generated. And the leading edge hit the second target. And this is the leading edge of the echo now. And you can see separated there's a gap between them and as a result we're going to have two different targets on our radar okay but what happens if the targets are closer together they're less than half a, a, a pulse length so here comes our pulse it's coming out and it hits the first target so we should start to see an echo start to come out and here uh, the, uh, uh, and the echo will be generated, it will get longer and longer until the trailing edge passes by the boat. So it's, okay, you can see the echo is still being generated, but over here, the leading edge has already hit the second target and a pulse is coming out of that radar as well, okay? Here, the leading, the trailing edge just passed this, but the leading edge uh, hitting the second target created an echo, and now they're overlapped. So when this pulse gets back to the radar, it's going to look like one big target. Okay? So if the targets are closer than half the pulse length, they'll appear as one target. Now, so what could I do? If I, if I wanted to be able to discriminate between these two uh, vessels, what would I have to do? Well, what if I shorten the pulse length? Okay, if I shorten the pulse length now, so in this situation, everything is the same as the last picture except the pulse is shorter. So here we go. It's the it's the leading the leading edge of the pulse hits the first target, so I should start to generate an echo. But the echo is going to be very short. It's going to stop right there because the trailing edge is now past it. Okay, stop here. The leading edge hit this one, so now there's an echo being generated. And you can see there's a gap between them. And as a result, I'll see two different targets. So that is range discrimination, bearing discrimination, uh, X-band versus S-band on attenuation, and uh, short pulse versus long pulse on attenuation. I hope that's helpful for you. Okay. Um, and that's all I want to say for now.